Hi there, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. Um, today's demonstration is going to be a uh, um, visual pun of, uh, I'm trying to decide, well, you, you've already looked at what it's going to be. It's basically, it's a jackass. Um, when you're doing a visual pun, the easiest thing to do, animals are great. I'm, I'm an animal person, so I like to do animals. Um, and this particular animal is an ass, and so it's going to be a jack ass. Um, so it's like, cue, cue the, uh, the laughter here. And what I am doing, um, I did the initial drawing very quickly. You can see that the drawing is very rapid. I probably didn't spend more than 10-15 um, minutes on the underdrawing um, because what it is when I'm doing an underdrawing it's more of a um, placement of holder of um, the balance where I'm putting things where I'm thinking of putting things but I'm not putting in a lot of detail because I can put the detail in my final drawing it's, it's always more like a skeleton when it, with my underdrawing and um, what I've got off screen, be in real fast, show it, and then go away um, because um, I can't, it's difficult to show this stuff um, because if I show too much of the image, I'm breaking copyright laws. Um, when I use it as reference material for my artwork, it's not considered, I'm, I'm not breaking anybody's copyright, I'm just utilizing the photograph as reference for an image but um, if I show it to you on YouTube there there's a possibility of of um, breaking copyright so when I show it something really fast like that I don't think that it breaks into copyright um, I'm not sure on that one so it's like that's why I, I kinda like to show you guys the the, um, the reference material I'm using but it's not a good idea because I can possibly get into trouble for it. Um, but anyways, so we're working on the mule here. I'm working on his head. I like that particular photograph because it really foreshortened the face. And whenever you do that odd foreshortening, you change the perspective of the drawing. And it makes it funnier. Anything that exaggerates makes something funny. So you push shapes, the character, like with this guy, his, his nose is like really big into camera. And so that makes it a little bit more humorous than if I had just done a regular straight on drawing of the face. So, and also it fits into the shape of this particular composition better because the shape I, I shortened up the jack into camera and it's a slight down shot so that makes it the the exaggeration works better and it fits better into this shape and for my next book uh, I want to keep things more vertical rather than horizontal um, my last book um, punnies was also that way so I wanted I want to keep this one in the same same line more of a, a vertical rather than horizontal feel to it so I'm fitting the character obviously into the long format which again works well for first shortening so what I'm doing right now I'm using this is Technically, this is your good old standard, I guess it goes this way. This is a um, Bic round stick, and um, you can use the crystal kind. I, I, use, I actually find that, that for some reason, and it might be a psychological one, not a real one, I find that the um, um, crystal ones usually are a little bit more gloppy. 
um, which I actually like. Um, I've been doing this particular style with ballpoint pen um, for quite a while. And the glops add personality to the drawing. Uh, they act like um, punctuation marks. They act like periods. And I like that type of a uh, little bit of a mess. I used to like everything, you know, like perfect, and and um, I still with my pen work with my um, um, my India ink work. I have a tendency to still be very precise, but I, I can't kind of tend to be precise and messy at the same time. It goes along with my personality. And as you can see, we've got, he's got this big cheekbone here. We've got some big nostrils and he's a little bit lopsided. Throwing him off just a bit here and there. And that, that'll make him a little funny, more funny too. Pulling the nostril a little more here. There we go. Um, you can still make mistakes while you're using your pen. Uh, if you really don't like a line or if a line comes out totally wrong, I, I'll show in the next step um, maybe um, how to you erase the pen line by scraping it away with a razor blade because the paper that I'm working on currently working on at the present is um, 300 pound or sorry, it's 300 gram boy let's get that right um, arches hot press watercolor and it's a very, very fine grained, um, heavy watercolor paper. It's almost like cardboard in some respects. So, uh, it, or very much like a, um, a Bristol stock almost. So it takes a lot of beating and will, uh, you can scrape it down with a razor blade and then come back in with an eraser and it holds together quite well. So we're going down, this is basically more of the, the mule part, giving him the fur and the fuzz and the, um, the more organic part of the drawing. So we're getting down here, and now I'm gonna get into the jack. It's, it's a, the type of tire jack that you stick under a car and, um, it's got a lever in the back. It's like right here is the handle that levers up so that you can lift up. The, this part usually goes under the car and these wheels are there so you can roll it under the car or the truck. So it's, it's more of a heavy duty car jack. I did another um, uh, punny in my last book of puns that were jack rabbits. And I used scissor jacks for that, and it, it really came out cute. It was a lot of fun. These are always a lot of fun. And the thing is, is that if you're um, coming up with illustrations, visual puns are just a hoot to play with. And I started doing them, the first visual pun I ever did was catfish. And that's the one that you, if you, you see in the, my, my logo there, that, that face that I use on the YouTube channel. I use it all over the place because um, I don't think I'm particularly pretty and it, it's like, you know, nobody really needs to see my face, but it's more, much more fun to show myself off as a catfish. And so I use the catfish as my, my face on all my social media. And that was the first visual pun that I did. It's, and it, it's not an uncommon visual pun. There are a lot of people out, out there who will do the same sorts of things. Just because I'm doing visual puns doesn't mean you can't do visual puns or somebody else can't do visual puns. Because it's not, you're not stealing any idea that hasn't been done a million times. So when I do a visual pun, I'm just, there are other people who have done it. And if you go online looking for visual puns, everybody does visual puns in different ways. And this one just happens. This one uh, was suggested by my beloved Troy. And 
this is going to be um, a, this month's giveaway for my patrons. Um, what I'll do is uh, I, I create um, digital downloads with coloring pages and um, prints and wallpaper and things of that nature. I also have a, a comic book that I am working on currently called Silk and Steel. Um, if you come join my Patreon, it's, it's, it's one of these things where I, I love having an audience. I'm glad you're here. I think it's wonderful that you came and stopped by. You might even be one of my patrons if you are. Thank you very much. And uh, if you consider joining, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I consider my, 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 my patrons as my cheering section. It's really nice. I'm going to draw no matter what. I'm going to create no matter what, but it's so much more fun to have an audience. It's so much more fun to know that there's somebody um, on the other end of the computer wire looking at what you're doing and enjoying what you do. Um, I've been in animation for over 30 years, and I've been in illustration before that. And the thing is, is that when you're an artist, it's a very solitary type of job. If you're an artist yourself, you probably know this. You, you can't really create, or it's difficult. I should say it's difficult to create art as a team effort. Even when I'm working in animation, you, you might get together for a meeting and discuss what you're going to do or collaborate on what you go, go, you're going to do. But when it comes down to really producing the artwork, you have no choice. You have to just sit down and do it. And when I'm drawing this right now, I do have a, an image of a uh, car jack off screen. So the, the bolts I'm putting in somewhat the correct place. But as with all car jacks, um, there are all kinds of different designs. Nobody, it, this is going to be, you know, it's car jack ness. You know, it, it, it'll look like a car jack. Anybody who's used one of these jacks will recognize it. But it's not really like a specific um, make of, of, of jack. I'll alter it a little bit here and there. And somebody who, who basically creates car jacks will probably be able to look at it and go, Hey, that's, that's our company's car jack. But for the most part, it's, it's just, it's jack with jackiness. Because um, you don't, you never have to be absolutely precise when you're doing things, except when you're doing specific uh, railroad engines. There are people out there who really know their railroad engines, or they really know airplanes, or they really know um, specific types of um, cars. Those are people who really care when you do it right or wrong. Um, the car jack thing, I'm sure that the individual who actually makes car jacks would probably be upset if I were doing this not quite the right way, but as a, as a, a, a creator, I don't think it makes much difference in the car jack. So it's like I'm using the handle as his tail, obviously, the front of the body as the the jack itself and of course just throw a hat on it. It's very much like um, a sawhorse. Okay, there's one you, if, if you, you want to try one if you don't want to do um, um, this particular pun if you're not interested in doing jackass. How about sawhorse? Actually, that's probably what I should do next. I could have a pair of them here on the, on the page. Here's a, a sawhorse and a jackass. So I gotta put a car here I think with a flat tire. I haven't drawn it yet, but I think it's going to go right about there. And you see, it's, it's like right now I'm doing little scribbles. This is just to, to give me an idea of indication. I know that a car is a bit like a box. I don't, I'm not looking at anything off screen right now. Just looking at that to see how that goes. And also, what I'll be doing too, I've been finding that sometimes when you're drawing with a ballpoint pen, it has a roller at the end of it, right? So the thing is, is when you draw with it, sometimes the ink will not get stuck under it and it won't draw quite the way you want it to. So it's good to have a piece of paper nearby that you can just get it rolling again. 
And the nice thing about ballpoint pen, here's just an example. It's like, you know, you can go really, really light and really heavy. So it, it's got variety to it. But anyway, so we're going to do the tail there. And then I'm going to put, let's see here. I'm mean, using um, rocks from Joshua Tree National Park. It's kind of a, a rough representational background. And they're more boulder-ish. They, they kind of run into each other as boulder-like things. And they tumble on top of each other. So I'm doing that real quick as kind of a gesture in here and putting a little bit of a fill in the background here. And this is a road going in the distance and coming out front here. Maybe put a few more rocks up here for interest. Always, if you can, put throw something in the foreground. It's a good idea just to um, give foreground, middle ground, background is the, the way, you know, I was always taught it when I was uh, going to school. And still, I mean, it, it's always good to have a foreground, middle ground, and a background just to give depth to an image because you're, you're working in two dimensions. Okay, so we've got some clouds. Now, if I were smart, and I don't know how smart I am, um, I'd let this sit for a few minutes and dry before I do what I'm just about to do. Um, I like to, this is a kneaded eraser. If you've never used one before, um, basically it's latex or rubber, and they uh, whip air into it until it gets to be like silly putty. And it's a very soft eraser. And... I'll go over this lightly to get rid of my underdrawing so I can see, okay, what, what am I actually doing here? What's underdrawing and what is the ink? Because basically the, the underdrawing isn't going to be there for the final anyways. So what might happen here, if I don't let it sit for, you know, at least 30 minutes to an hour, um, sometimes where you've glopped the... Uh, ballpoint pen, it will smear, which is annoying, and then you have to undo your mistakes, and undoing mistakes is always annoying. Oh yeah, that's coming out nice. So like I said, I'm, I'm erasing all the underdrawing right now. And that's kind of the, the bottom of the draw, the bottom drawing. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'll go in and heavy up these lines. So I've got really, whereas I, everything is, is loose before, as I go in, and as you can see I'm widening the lines, I'm making it more of a uniform singular line rather than the sketchy line that was there. And it's still, the sketchiness is still there. And it used to really bother me um, in the early days of my drawing to see the sketchiness of the line because I thought, oh, gee, it doesn't look finished. And these days I'm more into, I like a bit of a sketchiness to the line because it gives it two things. It gives it volume and it gives it character. And actually there's a third thing. It gives it life. Um, you can feel the action of how I've sketched in the drawing when you've got a little bit of a sketchy line like that. And you can tell I'm just going in here and just heavying up everything. Now this is going to probably take me another 10-15 minutes to really go in and get all the detail in him. So this is where we're going to stop. Um, when I finish this I will take a uh, scan of it and then I will turn the scan into a coloring page. 
because it'll it'll have a nice outline and I can clean it if I want to I can clean it up or I can just um, in Photoshop what you do is you just levels there's a, a section of the um, program where it basically will darken up or lighten up a line which are called levels and I will work with that to get more of a, a darker line for coloring page. And then once uh, I've scanned that into the computer, um, I'll, I'll basically finish this up in watercolor after that's done. And I haven't decided yet, I'm probably going to use, I haven't decided if I'm going to use a Schmincke liquid acrylics on this or whether I'm going to use straight watercolor. The thing about the Schmincke liquid acrylics, they're liquid watercolor. They come in bottles with an eyedropper and they're very, very intense. And the nice thing about Schmincke is that they are very permanent. They've got pigment in them and it is basically, it's called a liquid acrylic and they will last a very long time and they're very transparent and very permanent. Whereas um, I used to use Dr. Martin dyes at one point and you want to stay away from those like the plague, especially if you're doing any kind of permanence because Dr. Martin's dyes will fade. I don't even know that they make them anymore because people really didn't like that about them. They would come up with these extremely intense colors. But then after a very brief time, if somebody hung the, the pieces on the wall, they would fade in the sunlight. Whereas with Schmenka, they have pigment in them and they're more permanent. And with all dye based anything, um, there is going to be some, they're going to be fugitive to some degree, but um, Schmenka are pretty good. There, there are several other companies out there that make liquid acrylics. And what I would suggest is before you, you buy or before if you're going to do something permanent, look into whether or not you know, how long are they, do they stand up to the test of time? But anyways, I've got to go over this entire thing and rather than you just watch me heavy up the lines, we're going to finish this particular video right here, making a short video for the most part. You can see the road in there. And when we come back, if you come back to my next video, which is going to be the painting of this, I will have this line drawing completely done and nice and solid and then you can see how we're going to take it to the painting. I'm going to try to keep them both pretty short. Um, I, I think that the short videos work better but that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Please come back and watch me finish this this uh, little kid up and uh, let's see he's not a kid. What would what, what it would be full? This full fellow? <laughs> Anyways, we'll finish him up in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. Again, my name is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. Um, you can find me on Patreon, Instagram, and of course here on YouTube. Please like the video and subscribe. I'm trying to post one every week. Thank you very much for stopping by.